little Snapchat, so I finally started reading Kevin Kelly's new book called The Inevitable, where he basically lays out 12 inevitable technology forces that will shape our future. I'm one chapter in and already tons of ideas. For those who don't know, Kevin Kelly is one of the uh, co-founding editors of The Wire magazine, um, and he writes lots of books and gives lots of talks about technology and the future and kind of like where it's all going and where it's headed. Now the word inevitable tends to piss people off a lot. I've, I accidentally use it a lot when talking about different future ideas. I'm like, you know, this is inevitable and <laughs> it's, it's definitely going to happen. Like, look at the trend. These days I even try to avoid putting timelines on future predictions when I push them out there because I tend to notice friends and, and people get really riled up about the particular timeline and they don't look at the idea itself. And in the book, uh, Kevin Kelly like, pretty much laid out these issues like right at the start. <laughs> he, he knew it was going to be an issue with the, the name of the book being The Inevitable. And he talks about how like, certain trends are inevitable. So for example, if you rewind our civilization back to the start again and you kind of got back to now, it would be inevitable that we'd have an, an internet of some sort, a network of networks, but it might be a different internet. Like the internet we have today could have been like non-profit or commercial or closed off or kind of like government restricted, um, but it is still inevitable that we'd have the internet. And the same goes with smartphones, it's inevitable that we're going to have a communication device portable on all of us at some point. But the, the thing that isn't inevitable is like uh, Apple and the iPhone and that type of phone. That's why I love thinking about the future so much, because if you predict out the trends and not so much the companies, like, I'm not, I'm not guessing where certain companies or certain brands are going to be in 10 years. It's like, where are the trends going? As long as it doesn't break the laws of physics, on a long enough time scale, it's inevitable that certain things will happen. It's inevitable that we'll have computers the size of blood cells. It's inevitable that we'll have implants. So his first inevitable force he calls becoming, which basically is the idea that change is inevitable, that flux is inevitable, that things are constantly evolving and upgrading and improving and never fixed. And flux is really like a universal concept. I mean, you look at like animal species with evolution, they're constantly changing. They're just on a time scale that we can't, you know, recognize. And even things like our own sun, that's decaying, just on an astronomical level. But with technology, we definitely notice that flux. It changes on a daily basis. And every like seven to 15 years, we have massive new computing paradigms, like the one I talked about yesterday with AI. It's pretty cool, actually. Kevin Kelly treats technology as a seventh kingdom of life. He calls it the technium, which is a really great way to see technology as not something separate that's man-made, but as something that's part of natural evolution. Now there are a few obvious things that he mentioned that really struck me, like they seem, they seem obvious when you read them out loud, but it takes a while, when you, when you realise what it is, you're like, whoa, that, that, that's, wow, yeah, of course. So one big one was that most of our software, most of our, you know, our mobile phone apps, our desktop apps, our OS, and obviously websites, they update on a daily basis automatically. And Kevin was saying that he used to try and avoid these updates because every new update would bring about new features, uh, menus would disappear, and it kind of like upset your workflow and upset your productivity, but now he's learned to adopt because the longer you avoid updating particular software and all your devices, the more they kind of decay and get old and clunky and slow, and also the greater the shock when you update it to the newer version. I think it's because of these incremental, almost daily updates that we don't get this uh, thing called future shock, uh, where you know technology changes so fast that we just like, whoa, what's happening? Instead, we ease into. So we're in this world of like uh, protopian kind of processes where everything is incrementally changing and adapting and improving. Um, so it means we're always going to be noobs. We're always going to be learning. I think this trend alone has implications for user experience. I mean, you look at like any app, say, say like the Snapchat app, look at, look at how many features there are now, how many buttons there are. It's really complicated for the first time users. It will probably make sense to design apps in such a way that the features and functionality actually evolve over time, depending on the context and the kind of like time scale of that user, whether they're a new user or an old one. So for example, if you download the Snapchat app today and it's the first time you've ever used it, you probably shouldn't be uh, presented with all the features at once that's currently available. It should go back to when it was very basic. And then as you use it and the more you evolve and the more you learn about the app and once you get uh, kind of comfortable with the features, then it starts incrementing and improving and bringing you up to the current day features of the Snapchat. Now there's another thought I read that um, basically Kevin was saying that every morning you wake up, it's like your phone and the technology and the internet is constantly trying to provide for you, constantly trying to guess what you want next and give it to you when you need it. The internet today is very personalized and customized for each of us. No one has a set internet. Um, everyone's internet is completely different. We have personalized Facebook feeds, personalized Google search results. So I think if you combine all these concepts together, I think it's inevitable that we're all going to have these personalized internets. Um, that, that rather than the internet being this separate entity that we access, it becomes part of our life. From the moment people are born and even like while they're in the womb, this, this internet, the global machine, the global hive mind, the global brain, the global AI will be there with you and become part of your life. And it'll be constantly evolving and constantly changing its features and recommendations and personalization uh, to the point where you can just like know what you want before you even know you want it. And when the internet is that deeply involved with you on a personal level, it literally shapes the experience that is your life. And that's a crazy thought. Snap your thoughts. I feel joy.